Shalom, I'm giving all the praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem. Um, sorry, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shalom to the 144,000 rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. Anyway, this is a video. I seen this video when it first came out back in, I believe it was 2016. So, uh, Vocab had put it up again a year ago. And uh, uh, Apostle Ron Lapp had sent this to the video, the premiere that I did, the short little premiere that I did, the last video I did. So I clicked on it, and, I, and when I saw it, I said, oh, yeah, I remember this, this interview. This is when, um, like I said, this was like, two. this had to be two, 2006, 16. And he had a lot of information on us. So here's a, the brother. He mentions his name. I remember him. I, I remember him very, 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 very big cat, Wall Street type. Very cool, you know. And he became disenchanted. So he's he got together with uh, Abu Kamar, and they set up a thing, uh, Truth After Knowledge. And this is when we first got came out on YouTube. And you got to understand, Abu Kamar, which uh, Vocab works with, Ab Abu been attacking us, <clears throat> I, I guess, end of 2007 beginning of 2008 <clears throat> so we're talking about a, another eight years when um vocat come on the scene we come to find out that they work together so matter of fact let me give you the title of the video before i forget gms is the only camp that acknowledges that marshall's king david peter etc and Ariaz John, the Revelator, and so forth and so on. Joshua, the second in command of Moses. So we believe Masha is King David, Moses. So the title is GMS is the only camp. I may put it in form of one West camp that still believes that Masha is King David. None of these other camps believe that. Now you can tell me that nah, no, nah, that's not true. I'll 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 apologize. I know IUIC doesn't believe that Masha is King David or he's Peter because um Nathaniel believes he's either Peter or uh he's either Peter or uh Elijah the prophet. And you can you can um go to the Passover 2023 when he came in on the horse um, the first I don't know 10 15 minutes of it you know he pops out as a surprise he was in the hospital they didn't know he was gonna he was gonna be the Passover and he surprised the people and the leadership knew that he was gonna be there so they were praising this guy he's a great man he's this he's that we don't know exactly who he is, but he's either, some to that effect, he's either Peter or Elijah. One of them said that. One of the, you know, hierarchy say that. So they're saying that if he's not Elijah, he's definitely Peter. If he's not Peter, he's definitely Elijah, which when you go back to one West, Masha was always known as Peter. And uh, Moses, and Zerubbabel, and for that matter, um, for that matter, Jacob, the son of Isaac. Isaac was Yahushai, which is yeah, which is our Lord. He came back as Solomon. Reincarnation is biblical, and that's a stumbling block to these Christians out there because they don't believe in uh, reincarnation. But um, HODC, they don't believe that. Uh, Marshall is King David. They used to believe that. They don't believe that no more. So anyway, I'm going to let you listen. And I may cut in and say a few words here and there. I may hit you with a couple of precepts here and there. Or even quote some. So let's go. I can split. 
So, so everyone knows, Tahar is still active, and I would say quite important in what's going on yes. in this. And from what I understand, is really the first man to get his camp to really utilize the power of YouTube, which is now kind of standard practice among the groups. And that's true. We utilize uh, YouTube. Although, to be honest, the IUIC was on there but year before we were. And we were... We were we know about that. We used to watch their videos, and also uh, the GOCC. But the, back then they were the Light and Body Church. They changed the name. It, it was a split, and he, he changed his name. Uh, Elder Rakar uh, Shiar, I think his name is Rakar. His first name. He was on there back in 2006. Remember, YouTube came on the scene in 2005. Now I thought about. Uh, putting up videos in 2006 and then I kind of eh, eh, we had videos and stuff and then it was in 2007 going into the summer that I said yeah we're gonna I made a decision to put be on YouTube and uh, that's when everything blew. remember if we never got on YouTube you wouldn't have nothing nobody be talking about Israel like like the, talking about Israel or Hebrew Israelites uh, today and um, we, cause we, we would do videos, and be out on the street, 33rd and 7, 34th and 7th. And uh, we would put out, back then on YouTube, you can only was supposed, you can only, you're only allowed to put up a 10 minute video. So we would put it, put up the whole camp. If we was out there for three hours, they would get uh, whatever, 30, 40 uh, parts. Part one, part two, part three and so forth and so on and now you can do you know videos you can be out there for four hours and do a live you know but he, he's right when he says he's going to say that we were the ones that uh really made put this thing on the map so i'm muted but he was the yeah. one to really jump on that and he's over gms now Great millstone. And uh, what's going on there with that split, Kadash? Tahar used to, Tahar goes way back. Right. Um, he used to go out and street preach with Arya. You can see him on uh, Times, Times Square and, and stuff, and a lot of times he's like Arya's reader even. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, he was a lot younger at that, coming up in the ranks. Yeah. Um, Tahar, for some reason, made himself a lot of enemies. He was kind of brash, and, you know, he, he stood his ground on whatever he believed. Mm -hmm. Um, didn't compromise too much. He had a loyal following, right. um, and started to kind of lead his his. Just naturally, people sort of flocked to him. If you, right. you either loved him or hated him. Yeah, you know. And um, as you see, he is a you know a, a somewhat of a charismatic figure. I like uh, look on a personal level. <laughs> as yeah. I've gotten to know some of these guys, I like Tahar. He's always making jokes. He strikes me as funny. He's got like nicknames for everybody. <laughs> Tahar is a cool brother, yeah. And yeah. He, he always will, like, relate something to a movie. You know, he'll be like, what's that? Yep. Uh? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> right, it's just, it just right. strikes me as, uh, you know, uh, this dude, you know, okay. But the funny thing is he's over GMS, which is really the most tripped out crew, in my opinion. But yet, there's this dude that I kind of yeah. feel like uh, a warm affection for. Like, check out this guy. All right, I can listen to him. You know, I, I don't mean, like, it's accurate. I'm just saying on a personal level, kind right, of enjoying right. him. You know what I'm saying? Right, he does. He was, you know, he was always a showman on the streets, and, and he was was one of the more enjoyable yeah uh, teachers out there to to watch. You know, yeah. I mean, I can say, I mean, if you know, I'd be. I mean, I can see going over, over to Hara's house, you know, kicking. I don't know if he'd have me, but you know, you know. You know we, okay, so what's up with Tahar <laughs> and Cornelia? If you come in my house, we're gonna beat the shit out you. All right, I'm just joking, but uh. No, you couldn't come to my house because you're an Edomite. No Edomites allowed. Sorry, buddy. Elias, because my understanding is that's a key uh, piece to... By the way, this is fair use, fair use. I'm pretty sure Vocab Malone's not going to mind me putting this, these clips, you know, this, this up. You know? Because they're talking about uh, us, you know, myself and the other men. The former, former one, Wessis. All this going down.
Tahar and Cornelius Tahar explained. Was the first brother. Tahar yeah. was the first brother. They, they always had a, a breakdown of Acts 10 and Acts 15 to do with Cornelius because that was obviously sort of a monkey wrench in, in the um, the Gentiles can't be saved by. Because Every, it, appears, always asked. it appears Cornelius yeah. is not by any. The first person that said came out that what it said mentioned that Cornelius is an Israel, uh, Israelite or could be an Israelite or might be an Israelite was high priest Ariah before the split. I don't know if it was a year before the split, six months before the split. And he had a uh, short apostle, uh, elder uh, high priest Shaw called me when I was doing a Monday class. And uh, they said, uh, Shaw, I want to talk to you. So I'll get it, you know, I'm doing the class, I'm into the class. And he says, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think about uh, Cornelius being a, an Israelite? And I hung the phone up on him. I said, are you crazy? Because if Arias saw a vision or saw something that might that he might have overlooked in the scriptures, he would always, you know, for confirmation, he would come to myself, High Priest Shaw, High Priest Yeshaya, High Priest Lahab, you know, Gazak. And sometimes he would even call him Ma Masha, King Masha. Sometimes he would call a meeting to put your two cents in. So he wanted my two cents on it. So I guess Shaw went back and said, Ari, I said, what did, what did Tahar say about that? He said, he just hung up the phone on me. So I guess Ari, I said, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it alone. But he was the first to say that he started believing that. For, for years, they said he was an Edomite. He was there to hold the book. So he was the first. Then after the split, the spirit jumped on uh, Apostle Gabar, and he was pretty much thinking out loud. We were going through Acts 10, and he kind of he, he kind of he thought out loud. He said, "You know, this guy Cornelius might be an Israelite," and um, that led led, in, led into us going to council and getting kicked out because we said Cornelius is an Israelite. And as we had these different councils, we saw it. We all saw it. And they kicked us out. And mind and, and, and what's ironic is, like you got one of the main guys that was part of getting us kicked out was uh um was Bishop Nathaniel. Now what he teaches is that Cornelius is an Israelite. So I guess he sat down and said, Well, let me see what that let me see if that's the case. He looked, sat down at, long after, years after the split. He went through and he said, you know what, Cornelius is an Israelite. So he was dead wrong, kicked us out. They shall cast you out of their synagogues. So he was dead wrong. And guess what? He's going to be dead wrong about the uh, MOTB. Just like he was wrong about the, uh, the Cornelius thing, he's going to be wrong about the MOTB. And all your IUIC brothers that, when, when you see it, if you're, if you're a zombie, you're not going to see it. But if you're of the elect, if there's any members of the elect in the IUIC, their eyes are going to pop open. They're going to pop out of their head. And they might line up to beat the shit out of Bishop Nathaniel. Because I believe he knows that the MOTB is a, is a chip, but I believe he took a bag. Or he doesn't want to admit it because then it would say, well, wait a minute, we'll throw it right in his face. So he knows because when we break it down, it makes all the sense in the world. When he breaks it down, it doesn't make any sense at all. That's why he keeps changing after so many years. He keeps changing the, the way it's uh, interpreted, broken down. So let's listen to a little bit more. any stretch of the imagination, an Israelite. I mean, just read the text, and you can see how Peter speaks to him. You can see the way he's described. So all sure. of a sudden, this dude is, it looks like he's in the mix, right? So how do they explain it back then? They, the explanation kind of jumped around a little bit. One of the, uh, some brothers that go back in the school will, will know what I'm talking about when I say the, uh, the trick bag. You know, they would always say the trick bag, the trick bag, the most hired, the white man in the trick bag. <laughs> some, some brothers would admit that Cornelius Tahar was one who would admit that Cornelius genu genuinely received salvation. Right. I remember him saying in one case, he said, because when we came with the gospel, Cornelius was the only one who bowed down. 
Right, okay. brothers frequently teach that Cornelius was going to receive some type of mercy in the kingdom. Okay. Uh, alms deeds toward the people of Israel, etc., and stuff right. like that. Um, but no, no one ever came up. Ultimately, he bowed down to Peter because he was an Israelite. He's a, he is an Israelite, definitely. That's why he received salvation in, in his house. And he was a he he represented the the, the first Gentile to convert to being an Israelite. Meaning, his lineage goes back to one of the twelve tribes. You had to go back into the history of the Ma the Maccabees, where they were forced not to, you know, identify with being an Israelite. They had to eat pork. They had to speak Greek and so forth and so on. But with a satisfactory explanation of, well, if Cornelius could be saved, you know, why not? Doesn't any other Gentile need to just right. do the same thing, become a devout and God-fearing man and, Quick and receive question. the grace of God? Do you know the answer yeah. to this? Did anybody ever say, well, dude was probably Italian, so he was still an Israelite? I, did anyone ever go that route? You know what I'm saying? What, that, Sahar was the first one to say that. Oh, so, so the, the explanation, yeah. the modern explanation is via... His so I guess they'd probably be assuming he's some kind of Southern Italian, such as Sicilian or right, Napolitano, right. and then right. probably thinking through that he's able to have Israelite lineage, and so he legitimately is. That so that's the current explanation. That's pretty much as far as it goes. There's okay. nothing in the text that says that. All the the right. conversation that happens between Peter mm -hmm. and Cornelius. This is and Acts chapter 10, everybody. Acts chapter 10 primarily. But then there's a follow-up in Acts 15. Go ahead. Precisely. The, uh, the follow-up in Acts 15, it emphasizes it even more. Right, yeah. Um, Just read so, it. So, yeah. Okay, so Tahar comes out with this to kind of get around a problem. And um, what happens? What's the reaction? Okay, he already had some rivalries going on before that. Yeah. Um, there was there was two things that Taha was teaching. He started saying that Cornelius was indeed an Israelite. And here's the and, next one, um, everybody. Get ready for this. Here's the next one. That uh, in the kingdom or when Israel um, receives their power, it's all right to rape women. All right. That would be raping women. Ravish the women and all that sort of thing. Put, you a, know? put a pause on that for a second. So, Well, that's in the law. Okay, so... You know, if you want to get emotional and not read the law, then, you know, you're guilty of uh, taking away from the law, which is mentioned in um, Deuteronomy. I see the first couple of verses of Deuteronomy 4 or Deuteronomy 6. You can't take away or add to the law. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that. Mm. Okay, here, here we go. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh, your power, or your God, which I command you. So you can't add or take away. So if grape is in there, you can't say, no, that's not, that's not. You're guilty of adding or taking away from the law. That's why sometimes people use this, they call it the rape doctrine. Now, GMS wants to make sure you know they're not talking about doing it now. They are talking about the kingdom, just so everybody knows. Right. We want to That's call it like it is. Right. However, I'll tell you, man, the South Side GMS crew that I ran into, which Homeboy has resurfaced currently on YouTube, shout out to my fellow South Sider, he, he would be in Schiller Park, place I used to play ball at, and while joggers are going around saying, what OJ did 
to Nicole Brown Simpson is what's going to happen mm. to all Edomite women in the kingdom. That was righteous to do. That's right. Mm. <laughs> so it was kind of like a precursor to the kingdom, I guess. Uh, at least that's what, now yeah. I don't know if Tahar would say that, but this crew was saying that, and so GMS kind of has that. And so Tahar, Tahar came out with both things at the same time. What was the result? Well, uh, okay. So at, at that time, some funny things were beginning to happen in the school. All right. Uh, Marshall, Marshall was moving on in age. You had uh, Hold on. Two Can I ask you a question? Yes. I yes. heard, now you, don't, you may not have to comment, that some people suspect he may have been going senile. For the record, he was not senile. You know, when he got sick, he got. There's a backstory behind him getting sick too. Um. He he was not senile. He was older. You know, older person slows down a little bit, but uh, he was not senile. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was some evidence of that. Okay, it was shortly before his death. Okay, um, go ahead and just just some wanna... people had whispered that. Okay, right. go ahead. I'm listening. Sure, there there was two uh, upcoming leaders in the House of David mm -hmm. school, uh, which were Nathaniel Alaga and Rahab. Nathaniel Alaga now is who everybody knows as Nathaniel, who spearheaded the Israel United in Christ movement. That's the camp. Whenever we talk about him, we refer to them as professional polished, Very organized, so. um, rational yeah. in, in a certain manner of speaking, yet still kind of hardcore in doctrine. I mean, I'm trying to, they yeah. wear the purple and gold uh, so everybody yeah. can know, you know. They very much have all kind of been somewhat that that, that is very much Nathaniel and Nathaniel Alliga's persona. Right, okay. And uh, he's, he's kind of shaped, you know, his group after himself, or they've modeled themselves after him. Right. Uh, so that that was always his style and his approach. Rahab was a little more of a belligerent guy, um, you know, more like some of the guys you would see in, in some of those more uh, you know rough around the edges camps on YouTube today. Right. Um, so these guys were were up and coming in the ranks, and they kind of became Masha's uh, spokesperson whenever there was you know mm -hmm. they, whenever they as as Masha aged. He would send these guys out to follow up with the schools, going and you know, visit the different schools around and, and spur them on and that sort of thing, you know. Um, they began to develop a little bit of a different vision. Right. And okay. my opinion is uh, they they wanted to take it in, in some new directions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sort of a you know a season a power seat. Um, so I've like heard this talked about. Is this what you're going to talk about? Kind of sometimes referred to as the coup. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yep. Okay. So what yeah. happens? There's a council, right? Well, one thing the council didn't happen yet. Where they they they, they, they overturned my shah. Uh, one of my shah's loyal men was uh, was Tahar. And there's where you can see his sort of what I would call maybe tendency towards personal affection. You heard it. The only man that that was loyal to Masha, Ariar wasn't, Shai wasn't, Lahab wasn't, Shah wasn't, Kazak wasn't, none of the seven, the rest of the seven or the six, Yaikwa was loyal to him. Myself and the men under me in GMS, individuals um, such as uh, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ricard, Apostle Ryan, a lot of the bishops, but that, for the record, uh, Bishop Nathaniel was not loyal. He didn't stick with Mo. Matter of fact, he pretty much, in not too many words, called him the devil, because he had a dream about the thing. Take the pork. Mo said, "Take the pork and put pork juice and put in the rice." He woke up from the dream and said, "This guy's the devil." So he went with the mother demons and he said, "Look, we got to get rid of him." And I told Mo they won't get rid of you. I said, "Mo, they're gonna wind up kicking you out of the school," and they sure enough did. Can I tell you another story? These guys were over the money. They were over the, the treasury. You know, uh, they, the council, because I was off the council. I told them I don't want to be a part of this. I was on the council originally. I said, I don't want to be on the council. They said, why? I said, because this is a wicked, I said, this is a wicked ass council. So they got pissed off at me because I was so blunt with them. But anyway, Masha was, uh, 
caught a pneumonia because he was driving around in the car with no uh, heater core. And all he had to do, if he had told me I don't have a heater core, I would have got with my cousin Johanna Ball and we would have got him a heater core. Even if we couldn't, even if he didn't have the money, we'd have got him a junk one and we'd have did something. These motherfuckers were sitting on, they, they, Masha didn't have control of the money. They wouldn't even pay him more. I had to, I had to have a call a council for Mo to get $100 a week. These guys are going out jet setting like they do now to boost the club. Then remind, remind you, when they go to these various places, they stay at the most luxurious hotels, they eat the best foods. You know, they basically, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, jet setters. Jet setters is a word. Is a word. They, go, they go out there in style, man. They're just living life, traveling the world, you know? But um, they were sitting on, at that time, it was anywhere from thirty to $35,000, which I didn't even know. Well, no, I knew. But had I known that Mo was driving around in a, in a, a car with no heater core, and I'm pretty sure they knew it, or they should have made, you know, I would have, I would have said, look, man, this, guy's dri- this, this man is driving around in a car with no heater core. So they, so he wound up getting. I remember one council he couldn't make it because he had a bad pneumonia. Then he came back. I forget who told me, but they said this guy, this Mo, was driving around with a car in the dead of the winter. And it was a cold winter that year, driving around with a heater core. Now, when I was a kid, when I first got in the cars, there were certain times when my heater core went. You just had to bundle up. I was young, and you had you had to just deal with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Till you got up enough money to fi- fix your heater core. But that, now you can come back and say that's not true. And not, well, okay, good. All right, that means you're a liar. The warmth comes in very loyal. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He he never stopped being loyal to both Masha and Arya, no matter what differences he right. had with them. You heard that he never stopped being loyal, uh, disloyal to Masha and Arya, even though there was a a, a, a split. Through the, through the years, I ran after the split. We ran into Aria a couple of times. Matter of fact, we ran in Shaw, and then I, whether they saluted me or not, I saluted them, but they would salute me back. So I was cool with both of them. All right. None of them other one westers. Well, Zabak Zabak stayed with him. Who else? House of David. They don't believe that Marshall is King David. Because the, the guys that had an interview and I did the video on it, Salt Lake, Salt Lake City guys, they said, well, people used to call him King David and Peter, and he, he used to tell them, no, I'm not, no, that's bullshit. He knew he was King David, Peter, and all that. If you've been in the school for that many years, you know you know that that was a, that was a, a known thing. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he sp- still speaks of both of them very highly and, and with great regard reverence um but i think you know from where i was something that nate would never do something that nate would never do standing yeah tahar was somebody who sort of needed to be moved out of the and all of uh you see the great and powerful bishop nathaniel all them breakdowns revelation he got that from high priest aria he got a lot of it from me but i taught him based on what High Priest Arya and the other seven taught me. But um, Arya was known for going into the Revelation, Daniel, the prophetic things. So those prophetic things that he goes into, he got that from Arya. But he turned his back on Arya. I never turned my back on Arya. The way. Right. He had a lot of weight. He had a lot of influence in the school. Yeah. Uh, He he was dear to Masha. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think that they were going to to uh, take it where they wanted with with the hostel around. So they had to find a pretense to bounce them out. Right. right and the pretense right. they used was the Cornelius issue, which is Again, ironic said, because what does yeah. almost every group teach now? They all teach that now. Yeah, they, they almost all, all do, now. except for GOCC, I think. Right? I think they just got. GOCC are complete, a bunch of complete bug outs. Adam is a Gentile? Yeah. 
Yeah, G- GOCC is you know probably come the furthest out of the UPK groups. Okay. In any kind of orthodoxy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a- as I was saying, um, I think Taha saw the difficulty with the the Cornelius uh, breakdown, the right. the uh, the trick bag thing you know well the most high made it it was all there was always an explanation of why the bible seemed to be saying one thing but really said another is is almost whatever the bible really seemed to be saying was the opposite if the new right. testament appeared to be saying you don't have to keep the law of moses anymore it was a special reason that you had to get to understand why it was saying you had to keep the law of moses if it appeared that it was saying the gentiles could be saved no you had to delve into it deeper and find out so almost everything that was manifest and obvious in the scriptures you had to go for this, you know, long walk around. And, uh, you know, they tell you exactly why what you were reading was not what it seemed to, to be saying. And it was right. the exact opposite. You right. know, Tahar, I think, was one of the first brothers that, that saw ahead that there was a, a, a difficulty in buttoning down the Gentile issue so long as Cornelius was a genuine non-Jew, a genuine Gentile. Yeah, right. You know, um, there was also several people in Tahar's camp going way back who didn't look like a typical, quote-unquote, Israelites. Right. So, I mean, even in the modern era, there's the dude who led yes. the Southside GMS Columbus crew that's kind of notorious go. because he looks <laughs> like an Irish dude. Now, he'll call himself right. light-skinned. Um, and that's why sometimes dudes are that's like... Really light-skinned. <laughs> right, yeah, light-skinned with red hair. And they'll say, yo, man, <laughs> don't call us a black Hebrew Israelite. Look at that dude over there. You know, that type of thing. Right. But, uh, so, you're saying there were some dudes that seemed like, well, you don't seem to fit the profile, but hey. All right. Right. So. If, if they could vibe with, with what the teaching was. Right. Tahar, is, is, as you see, is, you know, he, he, he claims to be able to read spirits. Yeah. You know? um, so, you know, he, 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 he exercises that if some. If you're a man. Every man's read spirit. When you deal with a chick, you read her spirit, man. There's women that I have met through the years that look good and everything. I got a number, and the spirit said, don't call that. Don't call that bitch. You know? Or, yeah, she, get, get with her. You know, there's a spirit. that You look You look at a spirit. You, you know, you, you look at a spirit. You, you don't just look at a body. You look at a spirit. somebody's um you know if somebody strikes him as israel then boom they're, they're israel you know leonardo dicaprio in, in tahar's book is is an israelite oh well, he is italian uh, you know yeah he just he likes his style you know yeah. leonardo dicaprio is a cool dude so you know we'll mark him down if we ever get a chance we'll, we'll he might we'll be jake the, <laughs> he exactly. might be jake let me exactly. let me stop really so jake is short for jacob and a lot of times it's the way exactly. that an Israelite cat referred to somebody who's sort of not awoke to the truth yet, but is of the proper lineage is the way I would describe it. So they might say he might be Jake. Right. So because prior to Israel, who is Jacob? Well, let's, abbre- let's abbreviate it, break it down, speak with a little flavor. Jake. So there, there you go. So everybody can understand. Sometimes people talk about their Jake job. That's their job kind of outside they got to <laughs> go do, you know. Right. So right. learning the lingo. Now, there was always a teaching that, you know, they would quote certain scriptures. Israel is as a speckled bird. There was always a teaching that there were Israelites out there who didn't look like Israel. Right. Okay. Yeah. But nobody ever, you know, what do you do with that? Then you got to preach this thing to anybody and whoever responds to it, you know, you got to say they're an Israelite. Now, you so, told me something. Yeah. Uh, at least I heard it from somewhere where sometimes where in a modern era where Tahar will kind of be. Uh, not feeling, let's say, Brother Nathan, he'll say, you're kind of looking like a Watusi right now. You're starting to look like a Watusi to me, right? Now, I understand what that means, but can you explain that to somebody who's like, I don't really understand what you guys are saying right now. What's the significance of that? Well, if I had a nickel for every time somebody left the school or had a fallout in the school and uh, they were no longer dubbed an Israelite. Yeah, yeah. Same thing happened to me when I left the school. Oh, what'd they call you? Oh, you're an Edomite or, oh. or something like that. Yeah, you're a Gentile. Do they sometimes use stuff. the phraseology tear? It, yeah. So yeah, is yeah. a tear somebody who looks like an Israelite but is actually of the wrong ethnic lineage? Is that kind of the technical definition or what? Yeah, that could be. Okay. That could be. Yeah, that's one of the possibilities there. Um, so, yeah, like, like I said, they, they always kind of held that teaching. 
um, that anybody might be an Israelite for all we know, but only Israel is going to respond to this this truth. Right. Tahar was the first person to actually take them to task on that and right. say, "Well, you know, well let's let, let, let's uh, you know let's make it a because to them that was just a theory. No one ever actually brought." A non-Israelite-looking person into the school. So right. I was the first one. It's so, it's, and, it's interesting because yeah. sort of the most radical in the. Hey, so. And that's true. And I notice uh, the IUIC when they see somebody looks white, they all automatically you an need my you you don't know what that person standing in front of you is. You don't know if that's an Israelite or Edomite. A hamite, a light-skinned hamite with straight hair, a blonde hair, blue-eyed, pasty white hamite. You don't know, so you got to. A lot of them small hats are our people, so you got to tell them. You got to tell them that. The way they street teach, most people would say is GMS, but yet they're also the most open to say, yo, this dude may not yes. look like, but he's, he can be down with the crew. Even really more than GOCC because <laughs> GOCC still has these rules and regulations for so-called Gentiles where you got to be under the authority in a, in a kind of clear yes. way. you got to be kind of like commissioned. Your teaching needs to be monitored, that type of thing. It seems like GMS right. is a little bit more of an openness in that way, which is, again, highly ironic considering their whole approach and vibe, but, you know, it yep. is what it is. Right, right. So, Masha... Right dies when does he not die before Taha, uh, not before Taha got, out, got, got bounced out of the school okay that that was something that i was in the midst of i, I was right in the eye of the storm and mm -hmm. you know that, that council where um you know they, they were kind of pre because i did have you know something to do with a uh, you know some brothers out there in the bridgeport connecticut area that Taha presided over okay um, you know became close with one brother in particular and um so Every 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 school leader or camp leader was kind of jealous over their men. You know, they, they kind of yeah. want to control and, you know, keep them to themselves. They didn't really like people, um, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, cross communication between mm -hmm. other camps, you know? Yeah. Um, which I, I kind of broke that. You know, I became good friends with one particular brother. And um, because of that, some of the conversations that ensued, they wanted my input at the council. Oh, okay. um, it, it was really very manipulative. I didn't really understand what I was getting into the middle. Of. I was just a young man at that time, <laughs> right? You know, but it was to 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 frame and uh, you know, and, and get evidence against Tahar to to boot him out of the school. Right. Okay. It's true. All right. You know? So I mean, let's let's jump a little bit to the ICU. ICUPK stuff, you know, Tazadakia and all that stuff. Like, this kind of. Well, let me bring this okay. thing back. You know, and you mentioned it before. Um, shortly after, now, Tahar's out of the school. They disassociate from him. Masha continued to have some some uh, concourse with him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would keep certain holy days together and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, I think once those guys, once those younger men saw that Tahar and Masha still had a bond. That's when they had to attack Masha now. Oh, okay. Right. Once, you know, we got to get Masha out of the way, and it's time for us to usurp, you know, the, the reins here. This individual is telling the truth. And we're talking about Bishop Nate. He got up into the head. He had to cut, get me out of the way, and then he had to get King Masha out of the way. Which, which like he said, he's, he took the position of uh, Peter. So he's saying he's Peter. When you say you're Peter, you know, from the, uh, the New Testament, you're saying that the, the guy that's currently, you know, being called Peter is not the Peter. That's what he said. So, you know, Bishop Nathaniel's on a power trip. He ain't about this guy, so he's on a power trip. trip. Now, if he's, the elect, if he's of the elect, he's going to repent. If he's not, he's not going to make it. You know? Let me listen to a little bit more, and then I'm going to close. And then they came out with things that were probably true, uh, maybe somewhat exaggerated, but things that had been whispered since way back that, you know, some of those those old elders like Masha and then Maria, that they had been dealing with uh, Kabbalah, with certain types of Satanism, dealing with, um, with it. there was a book they didn't share with other brothers. I, you know, they probably long since discarded it by the time I came around. 
but there was a book, uh, The Seals of Solomon, where, where it was teaching you even intentions on how to bind and control demons and get them to do your bidding. Okay, so you know? I, I remember you mentioned this, so basically how to control demons. Yeah. That was kind of an right. undercurrent, and you're saying right. they, they brought this out against Masha, saying, hey, this is shady business type of thing. Exactly, right. exactly. It was a convenient time to bring those things forward, you right. know? Yeah, I got you, <laughs> I got you. So that's what they that's used the, for him. Mm -hmm. Yep, they they severed from Masha. The school I was part of followed suit with Nathania Alaga and, and Rahab. Mm -hmm. uh, that became 12 tribes, 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. And uh, that didn't last very long. It was shortly after that that I left the school. Right. Because once they became 12 tribes, all of a sudden, the teaching surfaced that Cornelius really is an Israelite. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, And I'm yeah. like, you're hearing it from this guy, and I know I know this guy. I remember the dude. He's a big brother. Big, he had to be about six, six four, six five. Big brother. And he was cool. You know, he used to come out to Harlem. He used to see us, and uh, he talked. I mean, that, that, I believe that was after the split and all that. But he was cool. You know, I mean, I don't know if he's a, if he was a spy or not. But uh, he's disenchanted with the whole thing. But you heard what he said, right? Let me bring it back. Didn't last very long. It was shortly after that that I left the school. Right. Because once they became 12 tribes, all of a sudden, the teaching surfaced that Cornelius really is an Israelite. <laughs> So you heard that, right? After after they kicked us out, after Mo got kicked out, I guess they went into this. You know, Canis isn't it? So they that's showing you that they're a bunch of demons. It, it, the same thing's gonna happen with the MOTB. Bishop Nathaniel is gonna have to come clean and say the MO that GMS was right. The MOTB is the micro C hip. And if he doesn't say it, say it, his his. The people that are under him, the leadership and so forth, if they're of the elect and their eyes are open, they're going to leave. They're going to come against him. So we don't know what he's going to do. There's going to be a major shake, shake, a, a shake up in the, um, the IUIC and in the ISUPK. Because I say them too because they're two big major schools or camps. Now, if they're a bunch of zombies and he's, you know, he's... Uh, you know, tapped in, for lack of a better word, he got the bag. If there's zombies and he tells them, look, nothing wrong with that, you ain't breaking the laws. As long as you ain't breaking the laws of Moses, you can take it and you can buy and sell and eat and whatever, because you got to live, you got to feed your kids. If he says that, then he definitely took the bag. And um, if all of them follow, follow his lead, none of them are the elect. They're a bunch of zombies. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Then these guys need these guys owe Tahar in his camp an apology. Right, right. You know when Tahar hears, was... and um, Bishop to this day, Bishop Nathaniel never apologized. And then we go back and forth with him with the name. We tell him that the name is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and he keeps pushing on Christ. And we don't know the name and Yahuwah and Yeshua and this and that. And now he's beginning to kind of say, Yahweh, maybe because of guilt, I don't know. But he got his men saying, Most High and Christ bless. So we don't know what this man is, is doing behind the scenes. This show, I feel like he's going to be like, Listen to these, <laughs> listen to even these fools be vindicating me, you know, <laughs> something like that. He's going to be vindicated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, it, like so, we said, it is what not, it is. Not that I endorse the things to our teachers on, on, on any level, you know, yeah. um, but, but that's just the way it went down. Right. That's the way it went down. All right. So I want to look at the UPK stuff, though, because we kind of left that for a minute. But what's going on there? A lot of changes there, too, around this 94, 95, 96 type thing. 
what's going on there? Yeah, um, UPK continued to be, you know, they they both continued to be rivals, House of David and UPK. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, As the countdown to the, what becomes the, uh, you know, and I guess the brother will talk about that later on. The year 2000 Uh, prophecy. We're going to talk about that at the very end of the show. So we're kind of really hitting the 90s kind of hard, and we're going to end this show today with the discussion briefly about the failed prophecy of the year 2000. So we're moving through the right. 90s, going to jump into that. So what's sure. up with UPK and all that? Yeah, I, I didn't, cause that was one group that, you know, since since we split ways, I didn't have any contact with. We just would hear things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had some web pages up at, at the time. They still had some programs going on in the New York area and some other cities and stuff like that, some television programs. Uh, but we didn't really have much to do with them. They they really despised us, right. you know. But as, as as the countdown to Y2K comes, I think they started to to shift some positioning. Well, once once it passes, right. there was a whole regrouping and uh, you know you know adjusting themselves. You know, trying to get some some new footing when their foremost prophecy ends up falling flat on its face. Right, Jehovah's Witnesses all over again. Yeah, which was funny because that was one thing they would always cite the passage in Deuteronomy. You know, both us and them. We we started House of David started to started to that that prophecy started to take you know a, a back seat. You talking as, about as Deuteronomy the eighteen, the test of a prophet, test of a true prophet. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that that was well. That's what I was saying before yeah. is that they would always mock the Jehovah's Witnesses and, and other, you know, fringe Christian groups would. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.